Hello, welcome to the Area Solutions channel. In this video, I'll be presenting to us projectile motion. More specifically, we'll be describing it and we'll be deriving the equations that are used to solve problems that borders on projectile motion. So we're going to start by giving some definitions to projectile motion. First, it's the motion of an object whose path or what we call trajectory is a parabola. That is when the motion of an, of an object forms a parabolic path, you see it's projectile motion. Then also it's the motion of an object thrown upwards such that the angle with which it's thrown is less than 90 degrees to the horizontal. And finally is the form of motion that is affected by just, just gravitational force. That is we are to neglect air resistance and other resistance that the particle may undergo while in motion. So if we take this as an example, this is a curve path and if there is a cannon that um, projects a cannon ball such that the cannon ball goes up and lands somewhere after some time, if the motion of the cannon is such that it forms a parabolic path and of course it's thrown vertically upwards at an angle that is less than 90 degree and it's resisted by gravity we say it's a projectile motion and there are several other examples if you toss an object into a waste bin such that its path is parabolic it's a projectile motion then also if you have bullet shot from a gun such that um, it moves through a parabolic path you say it's going through projectile motion and there are several other examples, water flowing from a pipe such that its path is um, um, parabolic, it's a projectile motion and so on and so forth. So we're going to progress by describing some variables that are used to describe projectile motion. If we have a baseball that is projected from a particular point, the first thing to concern ourselves with is the velocity of release. At what velocity was the ball volleyed from the point of release? That's the initial velocity. We have what we call projection angle. That's the angle that it makes with the horizontal as it's tossed upwards. Then we have the horizontal distance. That's the distance measured along the horizontal axis. We also have the vertical distance. Distance measured along the vertical axis. Then we have what we call range. Range is the maximum horizontal distance that the object will cover in course of the motion. Then we have a maximum height as well. Maximum height is the highest position reached by the object when measured from its point of displacement. So these are some variables and finally we have what you call time of flight. That's the total time the object spends during its motion from where it was thrown to where it arrives at its destination. So these are the different variables that are used to describe positional mo motion. Next, we are going to talk about um, the projectile motion equations. There are some of the equations that are used to describe projectile motion. If we have our object as usual, we have that um, it is subject to gravitational force alone. And gravitational force acts in the vertical axis. So we can say the acceleration in the y axis or the vertical axis is equal to negative value of g. That's the value of acceleration minus g, which is taken as 9. 0.81 then because we neglect every other resistance air resistance and all other forces acting on the body while it's in motion we say that the acceleration the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero and at the same time the acceleration in the z direction is zero so something else to bother ourselves with to concern ourselves with we have our initial velocity which is at an angle to the horizontal theta and then um, such that um, if we resolve to the horizontal axis, we have that ux, which is the which is the horizontal component of the velocity, to be equal to u times cos theta. Then, if we resolve to the vertical axis, we have the vertical component of the velocity uy to be equal to u sine theta. And of course, there's a relationship between the value of u and acceleration as well as the value of ui and the acceleration components in the y axis so we're going to progress from there of course we've um, talked about these components of velocity we have our acceleration in the x direction and we have our velocity in the x direction as well there's a relationship between acceleration and velocity and that relationship is such that 
acceleration a acceleration a is equal to du dt where u is the velocity and t is the time so we have that um, zero is equal to du ds simply because our acceleration in the x direction is zero so if we decide to integrate it zero you get a constant so we can say that us is equal to u cos theta so one can say that the velocity of a projectile motion along the x-axis is constant and throughout the motion and in the same vein if we go through the same walk through the same process for the for the vertical components we have that vertical component of acceleration is g we also have that uh, vertical component initial vertical component of um, velocity ui is u sine theta so there's a relationship between acceleration and velocity as well so we have the acceleration is equal to u du dt where t is time we have our value for acceleration to be minus g our g so we can put that into our equation to have minus g is equal to du d theta and of course we can go further to simplify this and integrate if we integrate the u and minus g related to t we get another equation uy is equal to minus g t plus c where c is constant to get c if you impute our value of of velocity when t is equal to zero we get that the value of c is equal to the initial velocity which is u, u sine theta and we can have that uy is equal to minus g t plus u sine theta where u sine theta is the initial velocity in the vertical direction so one can say that ui is equal to u y naught minus gt or ui is equal to u sine theta minus gt so these are basic equation to calculate the velocity of um, a projectile motion along the y axis at every point in time mind you let's be reminded that the horizontal component of velocity for the projectile motion is constant throughout for this case the for the case of vertical component of velocity is not constant it's a function of time so next we want to recall all of um gotten we've gotten our values for acceleration a y is minus g a x and a a z are both zero respectively then we got our velo values for velocity we got that u y is equal to u sine theta minus g t and u x is equal to u cos theta y u z is zero because there are no components of velocity no acceleration in the z components in the z axis and finally we need to find val equations for both for displacement in all the axis x y and z axis the equation for the displacement for the z axis is zero because we can assume a, a projectile motion to be taking place in a plane now if we progress from here starting with the y components we had our ui is equal to ui naught minus gt our derived equation for velocity in the vertical axis and we are looking for the displacement in the vertical axis that's in the y direction so if we call our relationship between displacement and velocity that's the y dt is equal to ui knowing that um, we can multiply both sides by dt so that we can integrate and mind you we have a value for velocity that's a function of time so since we are integrating with respect to time we're going to bring in that value so we have integral dy is equal to integral of ui naught minus gt dt so if we integrate this we will get one straight equation um, as shown such that our constant of integration we can call it y naught that's an input the, what's the value of y when the time was there what's the position so we'll just call it y naught for this case and if you rearrange the equation you get one straight equation that can be used to find the vertical displacement at every point in time mind you we had a value for ui naught earlier so if you put in that value you have that y is equal to y naught plus u sine theta t minus gt square over 2. so these are the basic equations that you can use to find the vertical displacement of a pressure time motion at every point in time and if we progress from here we also had our us to be equal to us which is a constant throughout the motion and we are looking for x value and we know that there's a relationship between displacement and velocity ds dt is equal to us so if we decide to multiply both sides by dt so we can have one simple equation to integrate if we integrate our equation knowing that us is constant we get one straight equation that x is equal to u 
ct plus x naught where x naught is the displacement when time is zero and then um, uc is just the value of horizontal component of velocity which is constant throughout the motion of projectile so we can arrange to have that s is equal to x naught plus ust and mind you we have value of us before to be the value of u times cos theta so if we bring in that into the equation we have our basic equation that can be used to calculate the displacement of a projectile motion at every point in time so these are the basic equations we've derived um, ax is zero az is zero then ay is minus g then we had our values for velocity as well as our values for displacement at every point in time it is important to um, point out that for basic projectile motion that were taught at elementary level we derive different equation for range for height for maximum height for time of flight and so on and so forth but that may not be applicable for advanced cases because there are times the object may be projected from a position that is not at ground level or the object may be made to go through to fall down deeper than the ground level so for such cases those equations becomes invalid so we're going to highlight basic principles of solving problems in for solving problems of projectile motion the first step is to identify what has been given to you usually three variables then after that you write out the necessary equation then after that you impute the given variables into the equations to find your unknown let's be reminded our basic equations for projectile motion taught at elementary level may not be applicable for certain kinds of problems in which the points of projection or the point for which the object or particle is projected is not at the same level that the object may arrive at for example if you project a missile from an aircraft it's going to fall down to the ground it's not going to go up and stop at the same level that the aircraft was or if you're dropping water from a pipe the water will go downwards and it's not going to stop at the level from which the water has been poured out from the pipe so for those kind of problem we may not be able to use the elementary equations that were derived for calculating range maximum height and all of that so this is the basic procedure that may be suitable for any form of problem regardless of how it comes provided it um, describes a projectile motion and finally after you've input your given variables into the equation you have to evaluate the equations to determine the unknown i want to thank you for watching and please do well to subscribe to my channel and hope to see you in subsequent videos